Hello, welcome to another video. So this question is a function written in the form of an integral, but we're required to show that the function is a one-to-one -one function. And the reason you need to know if a function is one-to-one -one is to know whether it has an inverse or it doesn't have an inverse. Because if a function is not one-to-one, -one, it means it does not pass the horizontal line test. And if it fails the horizontal line test, it cannot have an inverse. So for us to even find a way to get the derivative of the inverse of a function, we have to first know that the function is invertible. And you can only know if it's invertible if it is one-to-one. -one. So how do you show that a function is one-to-one? -one? Well, you just have to take the derivative of the function. If the derivative of a function is always negative or always positive, there is no switch between negative and positive, then you know it's a one-to-one -one function. Okay, now you have a picture of where we're going. As you know, a parabola is not a one-to-one -one function, so it does not have an inverse. For it to have an inverse, we usually cut off one part of the parabola so that what used to be like this, when you plot the graph, when you get the inverse of it, you just take one half. So we're going to pretend as if th this does not exist. And then we can say, oh, the inverse of this function is something. So let's say we have this. So we're going to have something that goes this way. So we can say, okay, as you can see, when you have just one part of it, the, the, for example, this first part, always has a positive slope. All the tangents are under the curve, so it's a positive slope, okay? But that's why it can have an inverse. But if you cannot guarantee that there is no twist, because if you have a twist like this for the derivative of a function, then it is not, the original function is not one-to-one, -one, because as you can see, there's a positive slope, negative slope, and then a positive slope. Well, if this is the derivative of another function, that original function is not one-to-one. -one. So what we need to look for here is just observe that the derivative will keep the same sign, always negative or always positive. Let's get into the video. So how do you take the derivative of a function written as an integral? Well, remember the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. It says that if this is a function and you want to take the derivative of it, then you know that, let's just start. The first part, we know that f prime of x, if we take the derivative of this, it's going to be d dx of this integral starting from 3 to x cubed of 1 over 1 plus t squared dt. So FTC part one says if you have an integral set up this way such that the boundaries go from a constant to a function, well your derivative will basically be you plugging in this upper bound into this function and then multiplying by the derivative of the upper bound. So our answer here is going to be 1 over 1 plus what's t? It's going to be x cubed all squared multiplied by the derivative of this one, which is going to be 3x squared. So our answer here is going to be 3x squared over 1 plus x to the sixth. That's f prime of x. Now look at this function. Do you think it's always positive or always negative, no matter what the value of x is? Well, as you can see, for all values of x, you'll always get a positive answer. Because even if x was negative, when you square it, it turns positive, And this is always positive. So everything in this expression is positive. So it's always positive. So you can say... So you can say since f prime of x is greater than or equal to zero, actually it can, be, it can be equal to zero, greater than or equal to zero, okay, then f of x is one. Okay, so as long as you always have a consistent sign, that's it, because it's possible that it's zero, okay, but we don't care about that. Now, what do we do? We just need to go to the second part. We need to find this. 
evaluated at zero. So, do we need to find the inverse function first? Well, the beauty of this is that you don't need to know the inverse function, okay? You just need to know what the derivative of the function is and use the formula to find the, uh, the derivative of the inverse function, which looks like this. It's a formula you should have learned, um, but if you don't know it, here it is. The derivative of the inverse of a function. So this is the derivative of the inverse of f, because f is this function. So if we try to find the inverse, we don't know the inverse, but we just want to find the derivative of that inverse. It's going to be equal to 1 over the derivative of this function evaluated at the inverse function of x. Now this looks a little confusing, but I have another video that actually explains this. So now that we have the formula, we want to know precisely what's the derivative when the input is zero. That is the input for the inverse function. So we're going to say that f inverse prime evaluated at zero will be equal to one over f prime evaluated at a point. Now you see this point is basically a value. We don't know what this value is, but let's talk about what the value is, okay? Because this is where confusion sets in. What we're saying is that you see this zero is going to be the input into the inverse function, okay? The zero will be the input into the inverse function, okay? But the input into the inverse is the output of the original function. Okay, so this is going to be the input into the inverse, but see the inverse function, all the outputs of the inverse, all the inputs of the inverse are the outputs of the original function. So let's go back to the original function. What would you plug into this function so that this integral, this function will be zero? Remember the output from here is going to be the input here and we've identified the input here to be zero so it means it's going to be the what you're getting here is going to be the output what would be the value of x so that this function will be zero what would you plug in because that value is what you need to plug in here is that x that we're going to plug in here okay if you watch my other video on how to take the derivative of inverse functions it's going to help you out but i don't want to dwell on that explanation because my major mission today was how to answer this question to show that f is one to one because i don't think i have a video on that okay so let's do this so the only recondition for which this integral is going to give you zero is if this and this are the same remember when you take an integral and you're going from a to a automatically that integral becomes zero. So this is only zero if the cube, if x cubed is the same thing as three. So we can say by observation f of x is equal to zero if x cubed is equal to 3. So if the boundaries of an integral are the same, you're automatically going to get 0, no matter what the function, function is. So what does this mean? This implies x is the cube root of 3. And that's it. That's the value we're going to plug in here. It's going to get nasty because of what's going to happen next, but we don't have a choice. So it means that f inverse evaluated at 0 the derivative evaluated at zero is one over, now what is the derivative of the um, inverse function we got? It's three x squared over one plus x to the sixth. So it's gonna be three x squared, but now our x is three to the one third. Let's write it, which is three to the one over three. I know that's not a nice way, but for the sake of this, I'm gonna write it as three to the one third divided by the three x squared. Okay, divided by, um, and what's the bottom part? It's 1 plus x to the 6th. 1 plus 3 to the 1 third raised to the 6th power. Well, we know this is going to flip, so this goes up and becomes 1 plus 
3 to the 1 third times 6 would be 3 squared. That's 1 plus 3 squared, right? Over, and this is going to be 3, 3 times, this is going to be 3 times 2 thirds. That's going to be 3 times 3 raised to the power 2 thirds. And this is going to be 1 plus 9 is 10 over uh, 1 plus 2 thirds is going to be 5 thirds. 3 to the 5 thirds. This is a nasty number. Maybe I should change it just so that you could see what I'm saying. So I'm going to change this to 8. Okay, let's change this to 8. Let's make this 8. And what else needs to be changed? I think that's it. We change it here. It's 8. And where else does it show up? Here. We change this to 8 so that this number is just 2 and it's easier to manipulate. Okay? So this is 2. And then we can go here and change this to 2 and change this to 2. Nice. Okay. Okay. And so that our final answer is going to be when you flip this, it's going to be 1 plus, what is 2 to the 6? 32, 64. So that's going to be 1 plus 64 over, and this is going to be um, 3 times 4. So our answer is 65 over 12. Okay, a nicer number. Not as nice, but we'll take that. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.